There are very few cases across history where ships with the same name have similar careers. Such was the case with USS Shaw, where both ships bearing the name lost their bow. One in a massive explosion that I have covered before, and the other one in an unfortunate encounter with RMS Aquitania. Just like her later namesake, however, this Shaw would survive her damage and see a good career after it happened although a rather less exciting one. Let's look at her now in this short video. Named for John Shaw, an officer in the early United States Navy, USS Shaw was laid down on February 7, 1916. As a Samson-class destroyer, she was one of the last destroyers before the much more famous four stackers. Displacing 1,200 tons at her full load, Shaw was a fairly average destroyer. She carried four four-inch guns for her main battery, all in single mounts, with one on the bow, one on the stern, and two mounted on either side of the hull behind the bridge. These were backed up by four triple 21-inch torpedo tubes and two one-pounder anti-aircraft guns. Shaw was capable of 29.5 knots, on 17,696 horsepower. This is fairly typical for a destroyer of that time period. In any event, Shaw was launched on December 9th, 1916, less than a year after being laid down, from the Mare Island Navy Yard. Her fitting out would go equally fast, with the destroyer commissioned into the Navy on April 9th, 1917. She would not spend long in California, however. By May 1917, Shaw was heading towards the East Coast. The United States had entered the Great War, and the destroyer was off to join convoy duty. Shaw arrived in New York on June 10th to begin that specific service. Her first convoy, a week later, was a small one. Nonetheless, it was a quiet trip that saw Shaw reach France by July 2nd. A good, if admittedly slow, start to her wartime career. This duty would change, however, in short order. Instead of escorting convoys across the Atlantic, Shaw was instead based out of Queenstown, Ireland. There she would work on patrol and escort duty, helping protect convoys on the last legs of their journey. The destroyer remained on this duty through the end of 1917. It was, again, a mostly quiet affair, with one notable exception on August 20th, 1917. On that day, Shaw was escorting a convoy when one of the ships opened fire. This was the troop transport Finland firing to her stern around 8.17 in the morning. Shaw promptly set off at 8.25 to investigate the spot that the transport had fired on. In this, she was joined by her sister, USS Rowan, and the older USS Trip. The destroyers dropped depth charges, while the convoy put their deck guns to use. Quite a lot of weaponry was directed at whatever Finland had seen. But no oil slicks or debris came up. If a U-boat had been there, it escaped. With that out of the way, Shaw went in for a 10-day refit on November 9th. This kept her in dock until November 20th, 1917, at which point she returned to her earlier duties for the rest of 1917. No major incidents arose, however, until the dawn of the new year. On January 16th, 1918, Shaw and USS Jenkins were escorting an ocean liner, SS New York, to Liverpool. This ship, more famous under her old name of City of New York, opened fire on an unidentified target that night. Nothing was ever found, but in the confusion of the night, the liner fired another shell at USS Jenkins. This killed a crewman and wounded four others. Not a ringing endorsement of the gunners aboard the ocean liner. While Shaw would provide medical assistance, the rest of the trip proceeded without incident, as would much of Shaw's remaining career, with only a couple other events of note during the Great War. 
First, on March 12, 1918, Shaw was escorting SS Leviathan to Liverpool. In company with other destroyers, she dropped depth charges on a target, which, as it turned out, was just a stick. A stick that was attacked with prejudice, but still just a stick. Which is why I picked that one to talk about, although Shaw would have several other depth charging actions. None of which proved any more successful at actually hitting a U-boat. Instead, her next major event came on July 1st, 1948. On that day, the submarine U-86 torpedoed a troop ship, the Covington. While on patrol duty at the time, Shaw received the SOS from Covington and rushed to her aid. Shaw arrived to find the ship already under tow, with the crew evacuated. With little else to do, the destroyer returned to her escort duty and more depth charging of such dangerous things as a keg and a riptide. In the end, the most dangerous thing to Shaw wouldn't be the various non-submarine targets that she dropped explosives on. It would actually be one of the ships she was escorting. On October 9th, 1918, Shaw was escorting the new and massive liner RMS Aquitania. Currently in service as a troop ship, Aquitania was sailing along under escort. Unfortunately for all involved, Shaw's rudder chose the worst possible time to jam. Right as the destroyer was in the process of zigzagging towards Aquitania's path. With no time to react, the massive ocean liner slammed right through Shaw's comparatively tiny bow. With predictable results tearing off 90 feet of the destroyer's bow. This completely wrecked her forward section all the way back to her bridge. The pictures, like here, really don't do justice to how terrible this damage really was. They certainly make a good effort, however. With her bridge mangled and fires raging aboard, Shaw's crew set about saving their ship. Through a heroic effort, they did just that. Shaw survived the damage, and in fact, sailed back to dock under her own power. A voyage of 40 miles, which is nothing to sneeze at in light of the severe damage she had suffered. Unfortunately, 12 of her crew were killed, and a further 12 wounded to varying degrees. 17 of her crew received commendation from the Secretary of the Navy for the efforts they put in to save their crippled ship. Repairs to the damage took until May 29, 1919, by which point the war was well over. She performed one final escort back across the Atlantic before Shaw returned to training duty. That would last until June 21, 1922, when the destroyer was decommissioned. After a couple years in reserve, Shaw was stricken from the Navy list on March 25, 1926. She was not, however, destined for the scrapyard. Instead, the destroyer was transferred to the Coast Guard to serve on the Rum Patrol. If you're familiar with the Coast Guard interdicting drug runners in the modern day, think of it like that, but instead of fancy cutters and hard drugs, it was aging ex-Navy destroyers hunting alcohol runners during Prohibition. The destroyer served on that duty until May 1933, at which point she was thoroughly worn out. After she was decommissioned from Coast Guard service on June 5, 1933, the old ship was returned to the Navy. A Navy that was generally trying to get rid of the much better four stackers, and had no need for a worn out relic of the mid-1910s. Shaw was stricken again on July 5th, 1934. Soon after, on August 22nd of the same year, Shaw was sold for scrap. Her name freed up for a new destroyer that would continue her tradition of losing the bow. But that's a story for another video that I'll have linked in the description. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And I'll see you in the next one.